worst enemy of the human being. It makes us not being able to see the beautiful things that are surrounding us. It makes us not realizing the good things that are happening in our lives. While we continue are sometimes not exciting in so-called modern life, some people come to remind us of the treasures we have and remove the dust of oblivion of the jewels that we keep in the basement of our houses. Lena is a German girl who recently published a book called Behind the Closed Curtains, which reminds us that it is possible to dust off our traditional home elements, remodel them, and give them a modern look and create a daring, bold, and lively interior design. What Leno has recorded in her book is only a sample of the historical background of using decorations in Iranian interior design and architecture, which is rooted in combination of Iranian culture, religion, and art. And it has evolved as time passes by. As a matter of fact, Iranian houses were a place for development of spirit and physical calmness. There is one thing in common between us and Lena. We both use this camera to record interesting events and life stories. Lena and her team travel all over Iran and took their camera behind the closed curtains of Iranian houses. They shot photos and recorded lifestyles, decorations, and designs that are somehow modern, but have roots in our history. Something that was not possible a couple of hundred years ago, but Lena wants to make sure she produces something that can be used as a reference for future generations. Something that shows where and how some Iranians lived in the 21st century. I was a student of Middle Eastern Studies Politics um, back in Germany and um, was learning some Farsi, the Farsi of the books. And uh, I wanted to learn the proper Farsi of, of the streets and really get to know the country itself. While traveling in Iran, um, I understood that, okay, some, there is something in Iran we don't have uh, that way so much. We also have it in Europe, but not in that way, uh, which is handicrafts. Um, so what I understood is like, okay, handicrafts, that's something everyone can relate to because it is interior design, it is decoration. Everyone has a house you have to decorate. So that's where I started. I thought, okay, also in Iran, there will be people who decorate their house and decorate them in a nice way, even if they're probably not interior designers. Mm -hmm. What makes Iranian decorative elements more special is that they're timeless. You always find some shining aspects in them, something to fall in love with. I think it's really cool when you're um, mixing something from old and um, bringing it into the modernity. Um, so this is for example what, what Mortiza did here with these henna stones, which are traditionally used uh, to paint the, or you place the feet on it um, the night before you're getting married and then you got the henna painted on the feet. Um, so this was the original use, but what Mortiza did, he copied them. Um, and use them as basically the feet for a coffee table. It is used out of, outside of the religious context, it's decoration. Uh, and I think it is really a beautiful and impressive piece, especially of course with all the feathers in this um, pink fleshy color contrasting to the white of the house. Uh, in Iranian culture, I mean, there is um, the flower as a topic is really important. So um, what we see here is like a lale, um, actually it's a light, um, which means also in Persian um, the, the flower. And 
here I think it's really nice the shade you find them throughout Iran. Um, these either candles or nowadays also they work with electricity. Um, but it's a it's a soft shape, so um, again it's a curve like in Iranian architecture you find a lot. Amir Hussein is an Iranian artist inspired by his roots. What is more felt at his house is a daring innovation that definitely comes from a character full of taste and art. What he does is to introduce another usage for the elements of Persian architecture and art, and thus let us see beyond the ordinary and normal elements of our life. <laughs> از همین حوزه استفاده بکنیم بابت یه تیبل پذیرایی میز پذیرایی خب ملزومات پذیراییمون هم به راحتی دم دستمون رو آب خیلی راحت میتونیم دسترسی داشته باشیم از خودمون پذیرایی بکنیم حس خوشایندی داره اینی که پاهمون رو میذاریم تو آب حوز و اینکه خب به هر حال یه صوتی یه صدای آبی هم لذت میبریم و با هم دیگه گپ و گفت میکنیم و خب یه تایمی رو به بهترین نحو ممکنه میگذرونیم چون این جون من امکانات وجود داشته دیگه برمیگشته به خلاقیت اون افرادی که استفاده کننده یه همچین امکاناتی بودن ما الان ترجیح میدیم که تو این دور زمونه این شکلی از حوزمون استفاده بکنیم تا اینکه حالا فقط یه زیبایی خاصی رو به فضای معماریمون بخشیده باشه حس میکنیم که باید یه کاربرد بیشتری هم ازش داشته باشیم A center yard with a pond in the middle, which is surrounded by rooms with different usages during different seasons of a year. At the first glance, you think this is a typical Iranian traditional house. But for sure, it is nothing like my grandparents' house. From what I remember, many decorative and architectural elements are the same. But they are being used very differently. And this creativity is certainly part of the beauty of this house. خب این نرده ها الان همونجوری که میبینین پای قلیونه این ترکیب و این کولاژ کنار همه این موتیف ها و این متریال ها اینقدر برای من جذاب بود که دوست داشتم تو تکرار به رخ بیننده کشیده بشه خب هیچ تکراری هم بهتر از نرده نمیتونستم پیدا بکنم Decorating your house is definitely not a piece of cake, especially when you're looking for some very unique items that are infused with Persian culture and our traditions. But remember that there's an artist inside of every one of us. An artist that knows what is beautiful and what is not. An artist that knows how to put things together. But we don't necessarily have the creativity to make these decorative items. And for that reason, People in places like here made our lives easy. You just need to come here and see all these beautiful items. Pick what you love. Make sure that it goes good with your other stuff and make sure that it fits your personality. Stores like this are the results of a recently started movement by some young Iranians who renovate old houses and decorate them with antique-like and traditional decorative items. I'm very inspired by all these amazing stuff and looking forward to use them to decorate my own house sometime soon. I should say this is the happiest day of my life because I published a book on interior design in Iran uh, and this is the final day, the, the book presentation. Um, I feel super happy. I am super exhausted too, <laughs> because it has been hard work. Um, I've gone through a lot of ups and downs in the last eight months, but I feel proud to now say, okay, I published a book, this is the book, and I'm a writer. And I've done something for Iran, a country I really love, and I started with the purpose to show a different Iran to the world and I think I, I achieved it. And Iran is a mysterious land. 
Every corner of it and every aspect of it is a book with thousands of pages, with beautiful images and amazing stories. Shahriyar Azimi for Iran. Thank <laughs> you.